I'm just gonna jump right in to this video because Violet and Milo are both sleeping and Kelvin has his headphones on and doing school. So it's the perfect time to do this video. Um, I have been meaning to do this video for my own benefit, but also for other people's benefit if they like to hear um, about this kind of stuff. I wanted to talk a little bit about my struggles with mental health um, in my past, present, and how I kind of um, cope with them these days. But I'll start off by like just kind of telling you about a little bit about my past. So I've always I've always struggled with my mental health like as long as I can remember and um, I just recently realized how like the different types of like phases I've went through throughout my life but as a kid I'm, I'm always like okay let's start out by saying I'm very a very dependent person like I whoever's around me I am very dependent on them for a lot of things um, but when I was a kid, I didn't really like to do anything that was away from my parents. It caused me a lot of anxiety, like up until like even high school, like I didn't like to leave the house, didn't like to go hang out with other people as much. Um, I had a few like close friends that I would hang out with all the time and like, yeah, you could say that I was a needy person <laughs> because they were the only people I would hang out with. So that was really tough on me because I was like always wanting to hang out with them but anyways so yeah I struggled a little bit socially as a kid um and I think that my mental health really took a toll when I we moved to a new city when I started high school and I um was the new kid it was a small town and there was bullying that went on and I really struggled with my self-image and being really insecure about basically everything um, and that's where I think that I started struggling with my weight um, so by no means was I fat at all or large or anything like I was a pretty normal slim athletic girl like I always played ringette um, but I was bullied and it made me very insecure starting there. And um, I went to college and that was my first time living away from my parents, which caused me so much anxiety. Like I was so anxious being away from my parents. Like I didn't want to reach out to, for help when I was financially struggling because college is um really tough like in university any kind of schooling is really tough for anybody let alone somebody who doesn't like to be away from her parents but so i struggled with that um and i moved out i first lived with my sister and her um boyfriend at the time they're now married but i lived with them and um then my second year of college, I moved out and I moved in totally away from my family, which in itself was like really hard on me. I really struggled and um, I was in a relationship which I was also struggling in. Uh, I was very insecure in my relationship. I was very insecure in myself. I was very insecure being away from my family. I just was not um, not doing well. So I coped with my anxieties and my depression through an eating disorder. So I went through that, like basically all my college years, I went through that. And shortly after I met Casey and we started in a relationship and he started going to therapy with me, really helping me out, um, being there with me because I didn't like to do anything alone. Like I still am very like much, it causes me anxiety to be alone. So 
he did a lot of therapy with me, with me which was like, I, like I'm just so grateful for him for that because I wouldn't have done therapy with him without him, and um, he was really really like supportive and non-judgmental. He still is super non-judgmental about anything and. So then it was like a year less, maybe, maybe a year less than a year, maybe a little over a year, I forget, when um, we unexpectedly got pregnant with Calvin. And immediately, like, I don't know, something clicked. And um, I just was like, I'm taking care of this human. I need to stop what I'm doing. This human is inside of me. Like, I need to, like, give them my body um, in a healthy way so it just clicked I ju I was still continually doing therapy um, but yeah so after Cal I was pregnant with Calvin I haven't really struggled um, with coping with an eating disorder since then I haven't had any issues with that kind of um, aspect of my mental health um, and then I did actually pretty well after I had Calvin. I went through like a, a few weeks, like the first six weeks was really tough, like transitioning to having a new baby. Um, there was a lot going on. Casey and I were finding, trying to find a house together. We hadn't even lived together for very long. So there was a lot going on. And I think I coped decently well for the circumstances with Calvin's postpartum. But after we had Milo, I had a little bit of like, I would say like birth trauma from the way his birth went it was a c-section it was not planned um it was it happened fairly quickly and it was like a lot on me and it was just not what i had expected and i had a 15 month old at home so it was just a lot and i struggled the most that was the hardest transition for me to motherhood and um, honestly, it was like, I was very, very depressed. I was very resentful to Milo. I feel I like I, I feel really guilty these days, even still for feeling those feelings, but I was really resentful. I didn't take care of him. Casey did everything. Like I, I the far, after the first week, I was like very um, down. Like I, there was no ups and downs. It, I was just going down, down, down in my emotions. Like I was just getting to the point where it was like, I need to step back and take care of myself. So I didn't breastfeed him so that Casey could take care of him solely while I got help. Um, and it was a really, really tough time for both Casey and I, and especially for me. And I have a lot of like, sadness towards that time of my life because I wish that it was different. I wish that I reached out for more help so that I wasn't feeling like that, but I didn't. I didn't reach out for help. I didn't do therapy at that point. I tried medications and I just was just not, they weren't working the way they should be because I think that I was just very holding back on a lot of things because I was embarrassed and there was a lot going on in our lives with, um, family that contributed to that that I didn't want to talk about it and I just kind of like stuffed her down and let it rode the roller coaster of depression and just let it I was super anxious as well it was just a really really hard time and like it took me a really long time to get out of that and feel um normal again it took me a long time to bond with Milo um, and now like his biggest mama's boy, but I don't think that I fully got over that. And I feel like I hold a lot of those emotions and things with me still. So I, I, um, I don't know, like it was a really tough time. And so I still deal with some of those emotions today and still feel really sad that one I did not have all the time in the world with Calvin I didn't get to experience all of his firsts with just Calvin like I feel a lot of guilt for that like I feel like 
he was stripped I know he wasn't, but I f it feels like he was stripped of his childhood or of his baby stage because I got pregnant when he was like eight and a half months. And I like carry a lot of that. And we had got pregnant with Violet. It was my worst pregnancy for sickness. I was in and out of the hospital, but um, I decided that I was going to apply for to have a midwife this time around because everybody talked about how like good it was for their mental health afterwards or um, during their pregnancy it was really good for them to like have that support um and so i decided to do that and that was a good idea <laughs> because i don't think that i would be as um, able to cope now if I didn't do it that way um, yeah Violet's pregnancy was super rough um, I knew I was pregnant because I was so sick I was in and out of the hospital getting fluids I lost a ton of weight I don't even remember it was like 30 some odd pounds I lost um, we were newly married I was like, okay, let's let's do this, I guess. I don't have a choice. And then we um, had Violet, and again, I struggled. Like, I thought, you know what? There was a reason why I was so... It was so rough for me after Milo was because of the C-section and recovery and, like, all of that. But it, it didn't change anything this time around. I was instead i was super anxious like my anxiety is still really bad and like for the first i don't know 10 10 weeks after violet i was like a roller coaster of emotions i would be happy and then i'd dip way down and be like i can't do this like why did i do this why did i have another baby and why did i think this was okay and i was gonna be okay this time around like i should have prepared myself more and i did tell myself that I was probably gonna go through it again because I'm an anxious person but you really like when you're in the thick of it you feel like you're the only one you feel like no matter how many times people tell you that it's normal and you're like okay but I, I still feel this way and I was like really really struggling um, which Casey was my number one supporter <laughs> on top of the midwives because I get phone anxiety, I get anxiety being vulnerable in front of people and I know that it's helpful for me to talk about it but I also feel like it's, it causes me a lot of anxiety but Casey used to call the midwives on my behalf and be like I think she needs to talk to somebody and like she's feeling very like out of control like that's how I felt I felt like I couldn't control myself my emotions like I would just cry at everything like it was just like like the same as that uh, when I had Milo I just couldn't control my crying and so it was really rough after Violet too and I feel like I coped better i did therapy i've been doing and i still do therapy on and off when i feel like i need it it's really hard with covid right now but i do still do therapy virtually if i need it i use my essential oils to help me deep breathe like ground myself like that's what i kind of do um i'm not on medication right now because i can't for the life of me remember to take it i can't get into that routine so it's just not for me right now not to say that I never will go on it again, I just feel like I just, it's not the path I'm taking right now. Um, but lately I've just been feeling very um, anxious, like for no reason. Like I feel like it's really like trigger warning. Like I feel like my kids are gonna die all the time. And that's like, I feel like I am out of control still and like even though I look put together and I'm happy and like all of this stuff like I, I have those like intrusive thoughts of like okay check on the kids 10 times okay like you need to hold Violet okay like 
Calvin's got the sniffles. Oh my gosh, she's got COVID-19. He's gonna die. Like, like it just like the roller coaster of emotions is really, really bad. Like this time, and I feel like I get into these spurts of like I feel really good. I'm doing really good. I'm keeping up on things. I'm getting ready. Um, I tell myself today's gonna be a good day, but then there's times where I'm like struggling to get out of bed. I haven't slept and that's like a huge trigger of for my anxiety is no lack of sleep and Violet does not sleep. So um, it's a struggle. Now I'm good at telling people, but I wasn't always good at telling people when I'm in a not good state I would just let people be around and then it would make it worse and it's like I just need to take time for myself but so I feel like I'm coping okay it's just I feel like I am struggling to let myself get the help that I need because I don't want to take away from I feel like I don't want to take away from somebody else that might need it more and like it's not the right mentality I need, but I just, that's just the way I am. And like, I don't like asking for the help. I don't know, I just feel like I'm just in a slump where I'm just kind of like chugging along um, with my anxiety and it's starting to get worse and worse and worse. And I needed to get back to coping better for myself and also for my kids. Miss Violet woke up. She's upset. Oh, she's got wild hair because I put her first pony in. But as I was saying, um, I never advocate advocated for myself to get help. I never tried to cope in healthy ways. Um, and now, I wish that I could tell myself that like you're not alone, I wasn't alone, I like a lot of other people are feeling the same feelings, a lot of other people go through the same things because I go through, I've gone through a lot of mental health struggles like different and different mental health struggles and different times of my life when I had kids, when I didn't have kids like and I wish that these tough big feelings <laughs> but it's it's not okay to struggle through it and that's the biggest thing is that I was struggling through it because I thought that I was just gonna have to live like that forever I was just gonna live an anxious life and depressed and and that it was this big embarrassing thing and it's not and it's like I wish that I could just tell myself that it's okay to get help and it's okay that people aren't judging you and I, I don't know I just reach out now more because I feel like I'm not embarrassed by what's going on and I'm gonna be anxious probably for the rest of my life I'm gonna deal with anxiety and mental health issues and maybe depression and I'm going to be struggling or dealing with it my entire life probably so like why be ashamed of that because then I'm going to live my life ashamed and that's not what I need. I don't need to be ashamed so I just like to talk because I, I know that I didn't, I wanted people to talk about this kind of stuff and like I wanted to hear it from other people that they had those same struggles because that is like such good therapy for me. Such good therapy to hear that other people feel the same way as I do. And that I'm not the only crazy person. And I'm not crazy at all, actually. So like, that's what I needed to hear. And that's what I'm trying to do here is, thank you, help myself, but also, help myself, but also like, show other people that um, and show other people that it's okay to have anxiety and it's okay to have depression and it's okay and 
you can still lead a normal life just the way you are. And that's where I'm I'm on a mission to love myself. I'm on a mission to love myself, my body. I'm on a mission to love everything about me because you only get one body, you can only get one me. That's how I just tell myself. And might as well just live the life that I want to live without judgment because I want to do what I want to do with my life and not regret it. And that's that. So, I hope any of this is helpful for anybody. It's mostly just for me, I know. But I hope that you guys all enjoyed me being vulnerable with you. And um, even if you're watching this long, them i love everybody i love it love you all if you ever need anybody i am always willing to chat i love listening to everybody as well as it makes me feel like i'm not alone because odds are i've felt the same in my lifetime and i've gone through similar things in my lifetime so these little beans they make you so wild it's really hard being a parent but it's the best job that I know that I've had ever in my entire life. And I obviously wouldn't change it for the world, but it does bring on a lot. And it's a lot mentally, it's a lot physically, it's a lot in everything. So don't hesitate to reach out to me, to anybody, because your mental health matters. And I had to learn that the hard way. And I don't, I hope that you don't have to learn that the hard way and struggle through it. So. I hope me rambling on and talking about my struggles is helpful and I promise next video will be fun because I already filmed it. I already filmed a fun video. You'll probably get three videos this week just because I want to uh, put it up there and show you guys what we did uh, on the weekend. But yeah, I love you all and we'll see you again soon. Bye.